the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I have been sharing with us the laws that are responsible for dramatic breakthroughs write this down the first thing i want you to write is nothing happens on its own nothing happens on its own failure does not happen on its own success does not happen on its own lifting does not happen on its own stepping into a realm of the anointing does not happen on its own a business does not grow and expand on its own a ministry does not become great on its own every level of success is initiated and sustained by laws write it every level of success is initiated and sustained by laws l-a-w-s laws principles keys a door does not open because you want to enter your desire to enter is not the seed for open doors access to the key is what opens the door you can stand in front of a door you can wish to enter you can hope to enter you can even ask to enter you can beg to enter but the door will not open it was not designed to open just from wishing whoever possesses the key is the one who opens the door have you seen a very big door being controlled by a small key and because that key is missing you can stand outside from morning till night is that true and so the things that we are going to be learning tonight, especially for the laws I will be sharing with you, I pray that God will help you and give us understanding to believe them in Jesus' name. Let's recap on the laws we've been discussing so far, right from part one. Can you open your notes and let's just quickly look at them. Law number one. Help me please. The law of relationships. Very important. I don't care who you are I don't care what you studied I don't care what school you went to relationship um, is very key to success who you know matters don't say who you know does not matter no sir you are people away from your destiny you ignore those people you never get there you will find God but you may never arrive there all blessings come from God through men to you please repeat it after me from god through men to me one more time from god through men to me it never comes from god to you directly it comes from god through men to you there is an impartation that is coming from god it's leaving heaven but it's going to pass through men to you are we together your prosperity comes from god when it comes from men, you're in trouble. It comes from God, but men have always been channels. I told us when we started that anything money can buy, relationships can buy. I don't care what it is. Name anything you know on earth that requires money to get. Relationships. When you pay money, you don't pay stones. You pay men. You don't pay goats. You don't pay animals. When you give money, the sky does not pick the money it gives it to the men they can choose to allow your relationship pay for it are we together that's law number one what's law number two help me the law of value never forget this another word for the law of value is the law of difference you can call it the law of reward that my relevance as far as success is concerned is tied to the solutions i can provide and the problems i can solve you're not solving any problem you are unnecessary and will not be needed there's no sentiment about it 
are we together a sick person needs a doctor a, someone who wants furniture needs a carpenter is that true yes you must find your place in the realm of greatness by becoming unique at your giftings value whatever ability you have never ask for a dimension you do not have the value to exchange for it the law of value works based on a reward system lord i want you to give me 1000 members you must rise to the place where you sustain spiritual value in terms of grace revelation access understanding and content to be trusted with those kinds of people when you rise to that level of anointing you don't have to call them they will come in response to it so if you pastor 12 people don't sit down and complain and get angry and say i i saw in my vision that i'm pastoring a nation but as you increase in value are we together the day three dead people are raised from your church you don't need to publicize for new people journalists will come you don't need to invite them is that true listen i want you to take this take this very law law too very seriously the law of value that means if people ignore me if everywhere i go i am ignored it's not because they hate me i am not a contributor are we together now the world celebrates contributors not not takers unfortunately we live in a society that is full of takers what is in this for me and life tells you there are all kinds of blessings but only a portion for those who have the ability and the grace to contribute are we together whoever solves the problem gets the reward Goliath of God was roaring and there was a throne there was a wife there was a tax-free opportunity everybody was afraid to confront that challenge but a young teenager called David came and said Saul I'm able to take on Goliath and he said what shall be done for the one who does this he will get a wife his family will be freed from tax and he will be honored David said I take up that challenge do you know it was a risk if Goliath killed David they will say we said it now go and bury him and um, Jesse take it easy you have other sons so it was a risk standing between you and your throne is a problem to solve the kinds and the quality of problems you solve determines the reward that comes to you are we together yes that's why there are different kinds of restaurants based on the quality that they produce are we together the amount you pay for this chair is not the amount you pay for the white chair you are sitting on why they are all chairs but qualities even among the stars one excelled above another in glory that determines your 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 reward it is foolish to give so little to life and demand so much no your reward is commensurate to your value so if i think my financial returns is small that simply means i am solving small problems or solving problems for small people whoever solves a millionaire's problems has access to a millionaire's finance are we together yes the tailor who sold your cloth is laughing with your money now in his house you parted with that money because you could not sew for yourself the day you learn how to sew you will stop paying him is that true ladies and mothers you went to the market today you woke up in the morning with money in your pocket now that money is not there where did it go to it went to the one who solved the problem you were looking for so if all you do is keep meeting problem solvers you will be broke because money will continue to leave you to them the day you join them as a problem solver somebody's money now comes to you are we together when you solve more problems than your needs you become rich irrecoverably more problems than your needs your needs are ten thousand the problems you solve is one thousand you are minus nine thousand that's a life of frustration up today down tomorrow are we blessed the law of value the key to getting out of a life of complex a life of inferiority is not just to say people don't like me oh I am this I came from this village all that is nonsense the world will throw away every excuse 
to honor valuable people. They are sport athletes who sometimes have to speak their native languages and they will interpret. Nobody has forced them to speak English. You know why? Because what they are doing is their sport, their field. They are footballers that you see with all kinds of things. Regardless of their limitations, they chase after them. Who pursues you is a sign of your value. Who pursues you? If weak and low and beggarly people seek you, it's a sign that that is the quality of the value you provide for them. If great influential people pursue you, it's a sign that that is the value. Listen, every man's financial destiny with respect to value and solution provision is left in his hands. It's left the hand of God long ago. It's in your hands. We have a very funny world that believes people should just bless you and give you money for doing nothing. And I always ask that question, who do you think you are? The world is made up of 7.2 billion people who wake up every morning looking for who can solve their problems. And you don't solve any problem. You see, that's why armed robbery and corruption is bad. You see that? A corrupt person has reward without value. You see why we say corrupt people are bad? So we see someone building houses and estates. But we ask, whose problem did you solve? If you can show us the problem you solve, we don't have a problem with the rewards. Whether financial or otherwise. So next time you ever see a rich man, don't be angry. Find out what value, what problem they are solving. That answers the question as to whether pastors should be blessed or not. I'm not talking of a life of extravagance. You know, most times when people see pastors blessed, they say, ah, just for talking. That's the thinking of a fool. The words I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and life. A pilot is paid over 0.5 million per month. Why? Because he's flying people across places. That's someone's salary for decades. And someone just finishes an aviation school within two years or three years and is receiving over 500,000. Is the value. Every accident from a plane crash ends in death immediately. Except some divine intervention comes. So that's a risk. Are we together? You sit down and for 50 minutes, sometimes 8 hours, when you are traveling from Africa to Asia, 90% of your journey is across water. You don't see a single land. And somebody is risking to take you over 45, 50,000 um, um, uh, feet above sea level. Now that's mastery. So he's rewarded. You who didn't have the courage to go to that school, you are the payer. And the pilot who risks himself is the recipient. The day you are angry, what do you do? You go to the school. When you learn it, are we together? Do not ever frown at a rich man again. Do not ever insult rich people. We have this ugly, most of our loved ones, sincere people, but they are truthfully speaking not offering any value and whenever they see blessed people they say see them see them it's a terrible way of living next time you see great people don't be angry find out what they are doing that you're not doing the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence closely related to the law of value value as a raw material is useless it must be refined before it is rewardable value must be refined before it is rewardable value as a potential is not rewardable it's the same thing as seeing crude oil as a dark paste of smelly substance but when you pass it through the required operations then you produce foil you produce other um, other very useful um, uh, um, what do we call it now very useful things that are required for home for cars and whatever you have and then they reward them competence is very important i taught you that excellence is a language 
it draws certain people to you the same way if i speak yoruba now every yoruba person hears immediately and they respond if i say praise the lord in yoruba will you answer in english you will answer in yoruba because i spoke your language if i say praise the lord in hausa all who understand hausa will answer back if i say praise the lord in Igbo or whatever language i use that's how excellence is excellence is a language in other words whoever understands me you are invited so if you do not come to the seat of excellence it's a sign you did not hear the language and you are not invited two excellent people can come into your life and reward you the equivalent of 1000 people excellence is powerful you must be accurate you must be serious with whatever you are doing you are a tailor be excellent you are a hairdresser be excellent you are a preacher be excellent excellent requires thoroughness excellence requires exposure excellence requires having a reference excellence requires consistent development consistent development outsmarting your own records surpassing ordinary standards that's excellence anything not done excellently is not worth being seriously rewarded are we together you make yam and egg sauce but the plate is not excellent is not washed dirty plate dirty spoon you are not serious it's a sign you don't believe in your business i shouldn't come there are we together you are by that atmosphere attracting certain kinds of people the day you change your plate you are serious when people come into your restaurant you greet them you smile you're welcome sir please be seated how may we help you oh i need so 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 and so do you have cold water oh we don't have cold water here sir but we can get it for you wow he calls his colleagues because experience markets i just found a restaurant when i came here they are so cautious they are nice they are wonderful people i shouted at them and truly i later realized that i was wrong yet they apologized are we together i finished eating and i was happy you are a cab driver people enter your car you don't just frown where are you going i'm going to sabo oh yeah let's go when you reach you just pack your yeah oh, yeah come down my money you will attract certain kinds of people but one day one rich man would disguise himself and sit down in your cab and you greet him hello sir thank you so much my joy to pick you where exactly are you going to sir oh really you have something doing there sir thank you before you know it he looks at you how much is it 300 naira can you give me a discount well sir honestly i would love to but it may not be possible i sincerely apologize let's leave it at 300 not lie lie 300 i've been working in the morning that's a terrible person are you learning the law of excellence yes there's no need you can be nice loving yet firm it's 300 and then you drop the person um sir would you want my contact details i'm always available for you my advantage is that i live within zaria i don't have to come from Sabo. if you need me i'll be ready to help you before you know it that driver attracts three or four or five people now everybody is driving but one is doing it excellently your car is neat you don't come and your car is smelling around doing all kinds of things you're driving someone he stops later on the road say oga how will we do now there are too many people who are not excellent they do regular things and they want extraordinary rewards listen stop excellence is doing ordinary things in an extraordinary way are we together i'm just recapping on these laws very important you must be excellent you are a hairstylist keep your saloon clean you are a tailor you don't have to show us you are a tailor by pieces of fabrics all around you can organize your place are we together organize your place you can't buy an ac buy a fan get a television let people come and be watching something you must be excellent you must be competent say i receive grace to be competent if you're frying akara on the road you can make your akara the best in samaru 
the best in Zion. Find out what can I add to this Akara that will make it very nice. Maybe the packaging. Someone comes to take pub. Why don't you say, okay, let me get a little trampoline just at a corner here. What if he's a, a respected personality wants to come and take Akara and pub? Does he have to sit down under smoke? I said, that's how we do it here. Oh, sorry, the cups are full. People are drinking the pub. And he's sitting down. He's hungry and doesn't have all that time. But he has to wait for somebody to finish taking his pub. Then you quickly rinse it and pour his own. No. No. That is a dirty environment, a dirty lifestyle, and a life of mediocrity. Why don't you get different kinds of cops? You have brains, discern people. Somebody comes looking as a smart gentleman. Then you can start doing certain things. Make some cops, factor your cost into it. Get a little, if you, if you want, take away, you package it well. Don't just squeeze an, a newspaper, a wire paper, or a, a jam paper. I don't know who wrote what there. There is ink. You are putting hot akara on blue ink. Are we together now? No. Why don't you use, what's the name of this paper, ladies? Foil paper. Right? Why don't you change? If you still must use that, your own akara, you put it first in a foil paper and wrap it. Factor your cost into it. Everybody say excellence. Get a clean table. Clean table. Put everything. You're welcome. Sit down, sir. And then you'll be surprised. One day somebody will tell you, I have a little get together. And we just decided we are rich people. So it's not like we are looking for what to eat. But we just want to eat akara and pap. And you are the one who will make it. And you'll be saying, I used to sell it 10, 10 naira. I said, no, 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 we don't do that. We're giving you 50,000. Whatever you can make, just make and bring. Not everybody is threatened by price. There are people who have conquered price. They are looking for quality. Don't ever be deceived that everybody is asking how much. No, there are people who have conquered price. They are looking for quality. They are interested in an experience, not price. Law number... What's, what's the fourth law? Law of what? Very powerful law that you must never forget. As it is in your mind, so it will be in your life. Realities are first shaped in your mind before shaped in your life. You don't become neat physically first. No. Neatness starts in your mind. If you are dirty in your mind and you are neat physically in three days, your environment will change to look like what your mind is. Not try to correct things first from the physical. Correct it from the mind. Are we together? Yes. If you are lazy, don't just try to prompt yourself. Change it from the mind. Everything that is wrong with your physical environment came from your mind. Environmental conditioning, genetic conditioning. You have to change your mind. That's why the Bible says to renew our mind by the word of God. I've seen people who you try to adjust their lives and temporarily they adjust but like a rubber ring you must return back to your default position you don't believe in honor because you don't know it it is not a mindset somebody whips you and says are you not going to greet him I say good afternoon sir and then in five minutes you are back to your default position of being rude and lousy it is terrible to try to fake physically something that is not a reality in your mind. You will betray yourself eventually. So the key to lasting change is to first create that correction from your mindset. And then naturally it will flow. If you are a, a dishonorable person, the key is to first change your mindset. Are we together? If you are a loud person, change your mindset. The law of the mind is powerful. Many people have changed their lives because they changed their mindsets. Some of you, before you came for Koinonia, you insulted men of God and insulted everyone. You joined your parents, you joined your loved ones, you joined other men of God to tear down other people. But as you came, the word of God did something to your thinking. Is that true? There was an adjustment and you made up your mind that I will love all men. I leave judgment to God. Now, you don't try to not insult people you are free already there are some of you 
like we spoke about excellence some of you were not excellent at all but when you came just by observation you felt i, I have to be this i should iron my clothes I, i'm used to wearing clothes that i don't iron i don't care whether it's ironed or not but now i realize it's not the price of the clothes is who wears it so i iron my clothes even if it is 200 naira i don't allow my socks to be smelling around and then i now wear it no mindset the most helpless person on earth is one who is resistant to mental transformation anybody who is resistant to mental transformation there's nothing you can do with that person the law of the mind that's law number what law number five the law of faith i'll teach you two laws now very quickly and then we'll pray the law of faith hmm. we're teaching success systems the fifth law is the law of faith say after me the law of faith f-a-i-t-h the law of faith the law of faith if you will ever succeed in life you will need to use your faith what is faith faith is the action you take based on the conviction you have about god and his word faith is the action you take the name given to the action not just the belief the action that is taken based on conviction obedient action based on conviction and the word of god being the source of that conviction that's called faith so when i take action based on the understanding of the word of god i have my heart is full of conviction and it, comp it compels my life to respond accordingly. I am walking in faith. Faith is conviction plus obedience. Faith is conviction plus obedience. Faith is not obedience. There must be an instruction before obedience. Faith is not just conviction. That's called belief. That you believe a thing does not mean you have faith. Faith is belief plus obedience. Conviction plus obedience. Many people claim they have faith. They only believe the word of God. Are we together? Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Nobody will give you a guarantee for success. You will have to use your faith. Nobody will give you a guarantee for success read it everybody is projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent have he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good in other words when god speaks it is within his power to make it come to pass say god has the ability to make his word come to pass say it one more time god has the ability to make his word come to pass write the following things down number one you will have to take risks to succeed you will have to take risks to succeed in 2010 during our kingdom wealth summit i taught in the business session that faith in the realm of success and especially in business and all of that is spelled r i s k that's the spelling of faith we live in a world of people who are so risk averse so fearful they will never do anything christians are some of the most fearful people in terms of taking action it's one thing to wait upon the lord and to wait for seasons but it's another thing for you to know that this is a season and you close your eyes and take a step of faith brothers and sisters if you must meet jesus you must walk on that water if it be thou bid me come and he said come there are too many people who will not take action you will not start that business because you are afraid i watch somebody lose i don't want to lose money i don't want to lose my shop i don't want to do this what if the birds die africa is full of what ifs and we never take action 
stand up and do something what if i apply and i don't get the job it will be that i wasted money it would take five thousand for me to go and submit my cv in lagos it will take another five thousand for me to return maybe i will need to book a hotel ten thousand and stay two days if i spend thirty thousand just to submit my cv what if i don't get the job there is no guarantee there is no uncle there we live in an age of fearful people risk averse people every champion every world changer listen to me is a person of risk abraham take your son see risk the law of faith a time must come in your success equation where you have to close your eyes and like esther say if i perish i perish failure is not the end of life don't fear failure when you fear failure you program it to happen in your life great people are not those without failures listen carefully great people are those who have learned how to rise even when they fall the brand seven up for years i didn't know why it was called seven up until i began to study brands and i found out that it was called seven up because the person tried six times six times and failed it was the seventh time that he succeeded that's why he called it seven up so six down and then seven up you drink it and you are happy but you are drinking somebody's success after failure what if he stopped the sixth time what if he stopped the sixth time like many of you have stopped most christians think because god said to do something means that you will succeed automatically you will still go through the law of process and many times it will require failure why failure because you have to learn why failure because you have to build mastery why failure because you have to understand how things work the body of christ thinks prophecy is just an escape route from going through the law of process make no mistakes when you see people rise they have made mistakes that you did a business and failed does not mean god did not speak to you and believers will be the first to tell you sam i warned you don't open a shop i told you there's no money in zaria you claim that god told you you open the shop after one week armed robbers came and waylaid you and by it they will say i saw a vision it's just that i didn't know how to tell you and based on that vision you close the shop and remain broke that's why many christians are poor broke and mediocre you sit down wishing i will do something one day until somebody just gets up and does it there is a vacancy i don't know anybody oh should i apply should i not apply and you are sitting there and you watch somebody with less qualifications than you go and submit the cv listen the world only honors men of action not just men of wish men of action after all the planning and everything you must take action you must take action i want to start the school forever you have not done anything apostle god called me to be a millionaire ceo you said this thing in the year 2000 you've not registered one company millions have passed through your hands you've not done anything i will do this i will do that the world is full of people at 84 they tell you when i was 20 years i wanted to do this and for 64 years they couldn't do anything the fearful and the cowardly never become great write it down the law of faith the fearful and the cowardly never become great there are people today i will learn how to drive in the name of jesus you started two weeks one one truck just passed near you and you said it's not by force the first time you you went to a driving lesson you were 19 now you are almost 40 you can't take a car by the road why not because there are no cars <laughs> i don't want to die but somebody needs to carry you from one place to the other yet you see some of these house boys have you seen them during salah nine years old on bike they don't think of failure all of them they learn how to ride bike in two hours they learn how to drive their buses within two days they are august pack it for them in pz and then while they are gisting, the boys are the ones who keep pushing it and that's how they learn in two weeks they have learned you see somebody who cannot drive anything driving to mina and you see risks that should kill him listen brothers and sisters 
fear runs away from courageous people fear itself as a spirit is afraid of certain people the cowardly in life never become anything one guy called me one time and he said apostle um, we were going to I, I think it's a crusade or so somewhere and he said apostle sorry is it possible for us to call you if we are stranded I said no I didn't send you go there and go to that field and experience what it means to have supernatural testimonies go and stand there there are coppers the moment they post them you are here they post them to buy Elsa. I don't know anybody you say everybody please call on Kudis call auntie that how old are you 30 because of inaction many of our parents the day they were leaving the village the only thing they left with was a blessing they returned back home after 20 years successful their parents just told them talk don't pursue women don't drink beer love God be serious we bless you bye bye when they came into the city they knew nobody but their God and they started listen let me teach you something never over pamper people give them an opportunity to take action especially for those of us who are rich love your children love everybody but don't over pamper people you must give people room to take action it is God that protects most of us that's why we have weak men today we have men who are like women you know why there is too much over pampering a young boy tells you he wants to write wayek and you tell him sit down and come up with an idea how much is the form seven thousand okay think of something you can do to raise two thousand and he comes out after three hours playing computer games and he said i could not think of anything are there no grasses in people's houses to weed are we together that's why we raise a lot of irresponsible people what's wrong with meeting someone and say sir i am a young boy who is trying to um, I want to move forward. My parents do not have the opportunity to help me. Please, sir, can you allow me with your grass? My budget is 6,000. I don't know how much this will be, but I can with your grass. I can call my friends. And you look at a young man walking his way to greatness. And you can say, go ahead and with it. And instead of giving him 1,000 or 2,000, you can give him 3,000 and your number. You have helped that boy. Are we together? There are many people who do not want to take action. There are many men today who lost their job since year 2000. Till today, they have been given all kinds of flimsy excuses. That's why we love prophecy. Because we think prophecy is an excuse for responsibility. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace tonight to take action. Give us Job 3.25. Never fear failure. Write it down never fear failure never fear failure for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come unto me this is job speaking never fear failure when you fear failure you create the you activate the law of expectation failure don't be afraid of stepping into the unknown be guided, yes, but know that no matter how people love you, you will have to take that action. God is speaking to someone here. Your excuses are over. You are getting older and older and you are not getting established. Why? Because I am, I don't, they, my uncle promised me when I was in 200 level. Now your uncle is dead. Stop crying. Thank God for your, your father said he would not help you. You must sit down and tell yourself, I'm not going to beg again. I sit down and I will do something. Let me tell you, heaven will back those who will take action and be serious. You are waiting for marriage to bail you out. You are a lazy person. You are a very, very lazy person. There are many men who are looking for wives. I don't have a problem with our ladies, honestly, in terms of responsibility. My challenge, especially over action, is for brothers. There are some of you looking at me right now. You are growing older, but your sense of responsibility is still at a zero level. 
no action if at age 30 you are still calling home mom see will you send me something pop see will you send me something listen to me very carefully you are on your way to being an irresponsible husband irresponsible father you don't become responsible just because a ring entered your hand you must be a father first before you have children it is not children that make you a father it's from the word abba the consciousness to be a provider are we together you are a man here and you are not catering for your family they may not have the courage to tell you but i'm telling you now you are failing god in that family are we together I wish I had the opportunity to reach some of our loved ones. Let me tell them. It's a shame when a daughter, a son, turns to their father and says, Father, it's, it's time. I, I need to buy a shirt. And the man says, what will I do? Sir, I'm, a, I'm in final year. I need money for my project. Should I kill myself? I tell you the truth. That is irresponsibility to the core. What should that person do? You are simply saying, go and be a prostitute. I don't care. Action. Today we are here by the grace of God because of action. After you plan, you must act. When you fail, you stand up, re-strategize and move forward. Let them laugh at you. The ones who are laughing at you have not taken action. That's why. You see, let me tell you. Anybody they are not talking about is because he's not doing anything. It's not because they like you. It's because you have not done anything yet. The law of faith. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8. Please give it to us. Every great man will tell you that he pursued the unknown. Every great man will tell you he took steps when there was no guarantee. It is usually when we see the results that we think the people had any guarantee. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you. It says, seek and seek although you have not found it seek it listen when i started doing something about my finances i didn't know how to move from point a to point b i started the journey to success understanding it in 2004 until then it was just gambling understanding but i made up my mind 2004 i said i will learn these systems i didn't know anything no opportunity for mentorship almost everybody around me was not really making it and i said no i have to learn i remember getting dr miles monroe's books and i started from there i didn't know but i began to seek listen let me tell you do not think knowledge will come and meet you and spoon feed you pursuit is the proof of passion you must be passionate enough to pursue it i watch people right now i don't know how many times seeking for uncommon mentors in the rain in the sun and little discomfort and he says, sorry uh, the way my hair is eh? every time i'm listening once there's heat it destroys you are not and i let the ladies do it that's all right god created that, that way. but you as a man i have headaches so i won't listen to the message <laughs> That means that panadol is far from you because the grace and the resources to buy it will come through what enters your ears brother say in the name of jesus i did shout it in the name of jesus from this night i declare that the days of wishing are over i take action now start that business go and submit your cv don't sit down tell yourself by september i should be walking that's faith by september i should be walking and see whether the god of all flesh will not make it happen lord i have failed but i'm starting again i i see the mistakes i made i don't have any capital now but lord i trust in you If you fall and remain there then you have really failed but if you fall and you still stand up you have not failed are we together everybody say courage shout it courage there is nobody I have watched people in this ministry 
rise up with no guarantee of anything and today God has honored them you must be courageous Joshua was now going to be a leader over several people several people God did not tell him Joshua make sure you eat well oh, so that you don't collapse he said be strong and of good courage they will act like fools but be strong you are a leader there is an anointing upon you you watch what we do today by the grace of God and think one uncle just gave money or somebody said I will give you venue or somebody said no nobody gives you any guarantee stop insulting your uncles your aunties your brothers and sisters and say nobody is supporting me let your faith support you let your faith support you are you hearing what I'm saying let your faith support you you had a dream and you saw yourself submitting a CV in Ibadan apostle but I've never gone there I'd like you to prepare and trust God for grace share the idea with two or three people carry your CV and go to the park in the night you are in Kaduna Park where are you going in Ibadan and see whether God tear your Bible if you go to Ibadan and God does not back you there he's waiting for you in Ibadan he's not waiting for you at the place of disobedience as soon as you get to Ibadan in the in the luxurious that you enter you will now meet somebody where are you going it's like I know you somewhere ah your sister's graduation I was a classmate really where are you staying the miracle starts the Bible says this sign shall follow if you don't take steps you will not see signs apostle when will I enter I, I mean I need the healing anointing must you die before you know you fell under the anointing you let sick people pass you somebody says I have cancer and you just say ah I remember this cancer is can can be transferred you see that attitude of unbelief you will never walk in power what do you think a miracle service is a show nobody starts with mastery you see how children walk they start and then they start crawling do you stop them from crawling sometimes in a bid to hold the table they hit their head does that mean walking is not possible how the child hits the head you you rub it what do you tell the child sorry sorry means sorry for now continue move again you love that child but you cannot walk for the child the person who stops that child from walking is stopping him from becoming an adult Are we together I wrote jam five times I didn't get it I will give up are you joking no look at jam and say jam as for me and you one of us will give up one of us will give up I will walk you and weary you where will the money come from don't worry don't worry God is alert and active watching over his word to perform it are you hearing what I'm saying Oh, apostle I'm of age and I need to move from my parents house now to get a place but uncle did not send the money keep quiet one day you get up and go and buy a bag with the 2,000 you have pack your clothes and say daddy just like you advised me I'm on my way going I got one one room somewhere and I'm going say that one room nothing there's no carpet you say sir if I don't leave I will not become a man like you if I don't leave I will come for as long as I come back and I can go to the kitchen who had part of my yam you are still a child you need to push yourself and you stand up and while you are moving God is saying watch this the angels are backing you do not know all of a sudden the moment you get there some brothers from your fellowship will come and God will speak to somebody buy him a rock the first time you are experiencing miracles by yourself not in partnership with another person's faith your faith is growing and you begin to see that God is faithful for yourself uh, apostle I think I need a job before I move out of my father's house how was your father when he moved out of his own father's house very fearful people very fearful people hallelujah I teach responsibility but you must conquer fear you get out and you stay in that room it's raining and water is dropping on you from that one room 
and you are just imagining the AC that is in your own house. Exactly. That's what made Moses a savior. Pushed him out. And as that rain is dropping, it drops and does something to your brain. And you say, no more. I can't live like this. I'm seeing the reality of irresponsibility glaring before me. The very next day, you will sell two clothes and buy one book. You are making progress. And sit down. You go and get financial dominion part one, two, three. And sit down. Next time you hear people are fasting, you don't say they are just... See, do you know why many of us don't take action? We have been reaping the harvest of many people's seeds. You think it's your faith that is working. The proof that your faith is working or not, leave all the support and stand alone. Then you will know whether you really have faith. Are we together? There are people who don't know how to trust God. There's this song in my heart. My trust is in you. You know the song? Sam, help me. Just that one song, one minute. I want you to sing that song because I believe God is speaking to somebody. You know the song I'm talking about? Lion of Judah My trust is in you Ancient of days My trust is in you I put them on you My trust is in you I put an edge in you. Hey, my trust is in you. Oh, and I am a Judah. My trust is in you. The ancient of days. My trust is in you. Alpha and Omega. My trust is in you. Somebody say, I put them on you. Trust is in you. Oh, I put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. Hey, a lion of Judah. My trust is in you. The ancient of days. My trust is in you. I am that I am. My trust is in you. Hallelujah. Listen, sit down. Anyone who is jobless here, I'm talking specifically to the brothers. Sisters, you, you are coming, but let me speak to the brothers. If you are jobless here, jobless does not mean civil service. Jobless means stream of income. You are not doing anything and you are not serious. I want you to know that God is talking to you tonight. Take action. Brothers, shout, I take action. Say it again. Someone has got to push you. And some of our parents love us too much to push us. Oh, I'm a graduate. Go and open a barbing saloon. The money you have can buy three clippers. I open it in the name of Jesus. Package a little seed and come and drop it in corn. Not for me, it's a principle, you know it. Go and open the barbing saloon. Are we together? Yes. There are many lazy people moving around. You may not be a millionaire, but from that little God will honor you. Tell yourself, I cannot wait until the day somebody tips me. Everybody that passes you, you are waiting and hoping they drop something. When will you start blessing others? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Can three people come and take action and say there is no ice cream making machine in Zaria. Three of us, let's come together. How much do you have? 500,000. How much do you have? 200,000. How much do you have? 100,000. Let's have an agreement. Let's get one of these shops and make one of the top ice cream machine machines around. You make it the first 20 people free. You launch it. Come and collect a bottle of oil here. Shake I will pray on it with all my heart. You drop it on that shop, it will be like jam. Hold on, don't shout. You have never done it. How many times have I spoken about it here? Listen, listen. Action takers are the ones who move forward. You 
graduated 10 years ago you submitted your CV twice and it's because they told you who do you want to spoon feed you with the job stand up and take action fail honorably and come I will hug you I will pray for you and you will go back you are learning how to walk you are learning how to walk everybody say I will rise again I'm speaking to people who tried rising and then you went down and Christians are usually the ones who say take it easy oh take it easy yeah this this decoration how many people get married in Zaria you just went to go and spend 200,000 to go and buy all this look at the, how many ribbons eh? you know you even say you want to do can canopy you better don't destroy yourself and all of a sudden you see somebody will come and just when he's opening the canopy that's when God is bringing explosion to another church and they'll say you are the one who is supplying this Look at those who supply canopies. Imagine if those who supply these canopies now are here in Koinonia. Every week. Even if you don't do any other business again. Yet you are sitting down. Buying fake things, fake whatever. To prove levels that you have not gotten to. Challenge yourself. The law of faith. You must take action. I have taken bold steps in my life. Bold steps in my life. The word trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 is from the word bata. It means throw yourself like you pick one of these are little ones. You see how these my children come to greet me after service. Some of them just run and just fly and expect that I hold them. If I don't hold them, it's still me that will pay for it. Correct? A child runs to the father. You gave birth to me. I didn't ask you. I fly. Pick me. That's what you do to God. When you take action, you put pressure on God's integrity. Lord, you said this. You said it is, it is, it is, um, what about any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel. I'm a married man with three children. Lord, I am tired of allowing, waiting for my wife to come back with 20,000. And that's what we're all feeding from. These children cannot go to school. Lord, I receive grace to take action. I will go and seek advice. I will go and receive prayer. I will receive an impartation. But I will take action. The anointing can come upon you. But you must take action for it to work. When did you ever lay hands on somebody to be healed? Oh, let me run to prayer department, Benga, or let me run to promise, or oh, anybody, let me run to any of the people. Oh, let me run to this. I think I'm hungry. Let me run to the welfare mama. Please, ma, you too, you know the way Nigeria is that if you, if you don't challenge yourself, you will never rise. You need to take action. Take action. Take action. Tell yourself, no, I'm going to be responsible. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. There are many of us who have never sown a seed. Do you know why? Because of fear. Never sown it. God cannot even tell you to empty your account. Yeah, 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 yeah. You will bind, bind and cast and curse and say, let this voice never speak to me again. That's why you can never rise. I'll never forget a time the Lord gave me an instruction to sow everything. Over 80% of all my clothes. Aside from what I did in Port Harcourt. And I just carried those things. When I sowed them, it was as if I would die. Now, I live, if God tells me to empty my account and empty my life and everything, I will do it gladly because I know him. I know him. Not because I like it. Not because it's convenient. When you know God, then you'll be able to take certain steps. Are we together? Yes. Listen. The workers in this ministry start dressing, arranging chairs and canopies way before people come. Did anybody sign an agreement? That by evening all the overflows will be full. It takes faith. We believe what God has said. We believe that we are adding value. And so in the morning people start preparing. Imagine that you wait until people come. Then you now say, oh, there are plenty of people today. Oh yeah, let's go. Do you know that every space you give God is what he feels? You have not taken action. That's why. Your shop is still small and you are there. God has been prompting your spirit. Move to a bigger one and say, Ah, God, don't mock me. So you will never see the miracle. The law of faith. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 15. God is speaking to someone tonight. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 15. Ah, 
this thing I've shared it has fired my spirit. And so, everybody read. Talking about Abraham. Read on. And so, after he had patiently endured, did what? Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Hold on my destiny. My trust is in you. Help me sir. Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. Sing that song with understanding. Put them on you. Sing. My trust is in you. Ancient of days. My trust is in you. Oh, I am that I am. My trust is in you. My trust is in you. I say, I put them on you. My trust, my trust is in you. It takes faith to begin to prepare for five children when you are not yet in a relationship. I'm preparing. Oh, I don't want to waste my time. Who will come and marry me? Let the guy come first. When he comes, and I'm sure the day he ever says, I will go and see your parents, I will read like never before. You will never marry that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, five children are going to come out from this womb. You take a step of faith. You have not entered any relationship. Who knows me? Look at that foolish question. What do you mean who knows me? God? The God you serve? You lay your hands, shape, You are bringing five children from this womb and they will all be a blessing. No giving birth to armed robbers. No giving birth to terrorists. I will not give birth to a son who will kill me because of trouble. You are preparing. You go and buy a book in advance. The power of a praying wife. You go and buy a book. God tells you you marry a man of God. You don't wait until a preacher comes. He may marry you as a civil servant and after five years God calls him into ministry. God didn't lie but you didn't prepare. God told you you are going to be a millionaire and you are waiting and say, God, when you said I'm going to be a millionaire, my palm sanders, everything I have home and abroad is 10,000. I can sell all my clothes for 20,000. That's foolish thinking. You go and buy a book. Lord, you have called me into kingdom financing. You told me I'm going to mentor and raise a generation and bless people. You do it. You put pictures around. Put a picture on your laptop that represents your future. And every time you see it, you prophesy. I may be small now, but in the name of the Lord Jesus, I have no father, I have no support, but I'm coming. I'm coming. I trust the name of the Lord. I may be weak. I may not be able to explain to people I'm doing something. They may even say you are lazy. What are you always doing in a room? Why are you always sitting down when you say, I'm building my mind? They say, what is mine? Are we going to eat mine? Just continue. The day God honors you. Then you will stand and sing this song that we are singing tonight. I believe that there is an anointing on this song this night. That people have to trust God. Take action. Trust God. It takes faith to be great. It takes faith to have a healing ministry. Nobody gives you a guarantee that anybody will be healed. It takes faith to be a man of God. It takes faith to be a businessman. It takes faith to be a wife and a mother. You are not allowed to have a child ordinarily before marriage. So how do you know you are fruitful? It takes faith. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. The ancient of days, my trust is in you. Oh, I am that I am. My trust is in you. There are people who will never build a house in their lives. Many of our fathers, their salaries were 150. Now they are retired. There is no house. You know why? Because of fear. I will build it one day. I don't have enough money. Then God granted you grace. They created one scheme in your job and gave everybody land. Four plots of land is more than enough to build a family house. Mostly, their wives will tell them, honey, build, build time is going is how much is the money there's one money i'm expecting it will come tomorrow god said you have hundred thousand it can bring one tip of sand go and bring it and pour it on the side that's faith 
you are saying lord i'm starting this out the hand of zerubbabel that started when you start god begins to move people i remember the first day we bought equipment i remember one by one one by one i remember when i started buying you know not even just for ministry for myself to think and say one day I'll get a laptop is a joke. A laptop? Who gives you the money? See, hear me. This God is a good God. Worship team told us already. This God is a faithful God. But while you are waiting for him, I don't know who I'm speaking to this night. God is saying I'm tired of waiting for you. Take a step. 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 Who told you the business will fail? Take a step. Are we together? Take a step. Ah, I have one million naira now. I'm thinking of starting small poultry. I'm thinking of getting a little golf. But I hear that this cars used to spoil a bee and that your profit doesn't come out. So you will remain there until the day somebody comes. Usually, those kind of people will sit down and then something will happen you will carry hundred thousand from it something will happen they will invite you for one event that doesn't have head and tail and they will massage your ego and you will know when you carry three hundred thousand on behalf of me and my wife i donate this money and the money has finished and you'll never be successful success systems the law of faith every great man walks on water every great man walks on water it is your faith that turns that water to concrete we are going to sing this song one more time and then I'll go to the next law. But I want you to sing it with understanding. I have trusted men, they have failed me. I have trusted systems. I trusted my certificate, it failed me. Lord, I lift my eyes and I trust in you. You are the one who can wipe my tears. My uncle promised me and disappointed me. Many have concluded that because I finished with the past, there is no greatness. That's what the devil wants to do all the time to make you not trust God. But I'm challenging men of faith. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Psalm 89 verse 17 the law of favor Lord I pray that somebody will get this in the name of Jesus I pray that somebody will get this Psalms 89 verse 17 for thou art the glory of their strength and in thy favor shall our horn be exalted favor is the number one reason people succeed favor is the number one reason the number one reason why you will succeed is favor
you need favor to achieve your goals and dreams you need favor to achieve your goals and dreams it is impossible to get to the place of destiny without favor no sir you've heard people say that one day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor it is hardly an exaggeration one day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor many people do not have favor in their lives why because they are not taught what favor is and how to release favor in their lives those who are even taught favor are only taught one side of favor and it's like whenever you say favor we leave it unto God God just favor us now no there is an exact equation that leads to favor favor is not a miracle write it down favor is a reaction favor is not a miracle favor is a reaction you can program favor in your life a reaction means that it is a response favor is a reaction it's not a miracle favor miracles can happen and do happen but favor is not a miracle what is favor let's define favor favor is when someone is willing to invest their life their time their resources their credibility to help you achieve your goals that's favor when somebody is willing to participate in your success it's called favor when someone is willing to invest their life invest their credibility invest their money invest their knowledge into you to help you achieve your goals it's called favor favor is not just unmerited access that's a very limited thinking limited teaching limited definition and is the reason why let me tell you whether it is merited or unmerited favor is access calling it unmerited alone is very limited favor can be merited favor can be merited your obedience and understanding the bible says good understanding secures favor favor can be merited what is favor someone willing to sacrifice their resources to help you succeed All success are related to favor. All success. Whether all kinds of success. Financial success. Ministry success. Business success. Marital success. They are directly related to favor. All success testimonies you want to write. All success testimonies are related to favor. I have heard so many success testimonies. There is not one of them. That is not related to favor there is a gap in that testimony all success testimonies are related to favor are you learning something write this down who likes you matters in your success who likes you matters in your success brothers and sisters one man called Ahasuerus hated one, one woman and her entire life crumbled just because one person of influence hated her are we together the same man who hated one woman and destroyed her entire life turned and loved Esther and her life changed overnight from a village girl to a queen who likes you matters now many Christians think it doesn't matter I don't care who likes me or who doesn't like me if you are speaking in terms of dependence on God I understand that context but in terms of channels to release favor is a joke who likes you matters there are people listening to me from Joss we came back from Joss 
and um, while I went to minister in Joss, you know, part of the system of honor for me, there was a little girl, lovely lady, and that they gave this thing they put on the neck and flower, you know, just to greet me. And as soon as I got into the hotel, there were people lined up and the little girl was standing. And then, you know, would come, you know, recite. I didn't even know what she was saying. You know, you are welcome to so and so and so. And then put that thing and then gave me. And I looked at the lady and I fell in love with that dear girl instantly. And I told her, I said, you know what? You are my friend. When I came on stage, I made sure that they looked for her. Ten years old. And she stood because I liked her not because i know her i just liked her the next day i said they should bring her to the hotel we'll drive together it was together i was gisting with her and i looked at the lady and i said i want to do something for you i want to do something for your family please bring your mother i want to see her now the rest is history but that little girl's life changed in two days simply because somebody liked her do not let anyone lie to you that who likes you does not matter i don't mean who wants to sleep with you who likes you likes you like from heaven likes you to change your life let me tell you the truth listen 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 take what i'm saying very seriously don't just laugh listen who hates you also matters when your boss hates you you will know that it matters because your life will be miserable you may be tongue talking but your boss hates you ah do you know this lady has been serving actively it's time to promote her I, I just hate her please another time and that another time is after three years but there's somebody they can like you as ah, has this person not been in this office for up to two years they say, yes sir. i thought it's three three years I, say, I changed the policy somebody like daniel and could not sleep in the night because some people manipulate a king Stop sleep because he liked Daniel. Early in the morning, he got up by himself. Oh, Daniel, has your God been able to deliver you? Daniel said, I'm alive. He said, bring all those people. Daniel didn't say, please, can you help me punish these people? The king said, me, bring them, throw them, kill all of them. Somebody, because he likes you, can fight your enemies for you. Enemies you don't have capacity to fight. Somebody can like you and put himself inside your situation. What is going on here? Sir, they want to collect our land. Our father is dead. We are only two. Say, no way. I'm a lawyer. Come and meet me in my office. I'm a lawyer. I'm a senior advocate. What did the person say? Because of that, we will charge him to court. He will not only return the land. He will give you part of the money for the foundation. I know what to do. Let's go. And you are seated somewhere. And you see people building a house you know nothing about. Because somebody liked you. Who likes you can change your life write this down one person can open a hundred doors of opportunities for you one person one man one person in your life showing you favor can open a hundred doors of opportunities first samuel 16 verse 22 please give it to us quickly first samuel 16 verse 22 jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and saul sent to jesse saying let david i pray thee stand before me why for he had found favor in my sight go and tell that boy's father bring me that smelly boy regardless of what it is let me tell you when you find favor before a man regardless of what your limitations are they are ignored to bless you you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life now this is coming as a shock to many of us write it down we're getting deeper now you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life if one day god will bless me it's a joke you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life the bible tells us in first samuel chapter 2 verse 26 that samuel grew in favor with god and with men first samuel chapter 2 verse 26 2 26 and the child Samuel grew on 
and was in favor both with what the lord and also with men listen it is one thing to have favor with god it is an entirely different thing to have favor with men i know so many people who have favor with god but they don't have favor with men luke chapter 2 verse 52 same thing was said about jesus luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with god and with men a man can increase in favor with god and favor with men the number one reason for the hardship in people's lives is lack of favor lack of favor i have seen gifted people who don't have favor i have seen blessed people in terms of abilities i have seen gifted architects no door of favor gifted engineers gifted doctors gifted students no favor i have seen gifted men have you seen men who are gifted they do work for you and you are like my god and you are at this level i know people who know everybody known yet there's no favor in their life you know that they know senate president they know one the chairman of their local government the governor's friend is their father's friend and they have they will show you the numbers of people if i show you look at this is saraki's number this is dogara's number in fact do you know that when i was staying in lagos there was a day that osimba joe came to our house i know him oh and there's no favor they watch everybody on tv ah that's ambassador abc you remember him now 1971 no favor no favor to be gifted is not enough you need favor you need men to partner with your life this ministry by the grace of god is rising not just in terms of finances because of favor favor My life today is, is a humbling testimony of God's favor. Psalms 102 verse 13. Psalms 102 verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon joshua selman why for the time to favor him yea the set time there is a set time for favor and everyone prophesy to yourself say this is my set time say it again this is my set time turn it into a prayer in one minute lord this is my set time when promise came here he said pray tired of hardship hardship is different from poverty a hard life a life unassisted by men a life unassisted by helpers is a sign of lack of favor you can have money and not have favor when you pay for everything by yourself you don't have favor now is the time of god that you arise the set time the set time hallelujah how many of you believe that from this night favor will begin to follow you yes i don't share my testimonies do you know why because many people misunderstand my testimonies when i share testimonies most people not you but maybe most people will think it is um it is pride you are boasting what does he think he is if i share with you testimonies of these ministries what does he think he is but sometimes it's good to encourage people testimonies are ways that let people know god is at work but because we live in a cynical world every time you speak people think you are bragging listen let me tell you brothers and sisters god is my witness and ask everybody who is close to me i only fund less than 20 percent of my life ex expenditure everything almost everything in my life is paid for by men everything everything now you can have the money to pay for it by yourself we are not the same 
you are not assisted are we together most people think having money is all there is to favor no the ability to have men stand up and say promise i am determined to make you succeed if you don't believe that thing there's no need for a comment for koinonia this night i looked at certain things in the body of christ and i looked at certain men i looked at certain ministries and i saw tears some testimonies of favor their life revolved as they wanted it was as if there was a charm anyone who saw them bless them one of the greatest people let me tell you i am convinced i received the impartation of favor directly from dr mike modok i knew when it came upon my life you know why he's a man that is greatly criticized in the body of christ because of seed 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 and all of that i may not necessarily believe everything but i saw on common favor on common a favor like a charm and while others were grumbling i said lord this man is an apostle of wisdom he is the gift of god to the body he represents the spiritual system that controls wisdom and the bible says with me wisdom now are riches wealth and honor durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice and i said lord this thing must happen in my life at that time you don't ever see somebody say god said i should do this god said i used to think those things were just stories you know when i think about my life today i almost want to shed tears you know why because I am a product I am if you are ever looking for a man who answers that name Ebenezer that a man that God has helped God lifted your hands that's why when I worship God I I, I, I do it I live a very happy and a very peaceful life because I found the key to God's favor there is no time in my life when I lack men to rise and assist and defend this ministry you see we are not just fearfully blessed just because of tithes and offerings the ministry of men strange dimensions of favor that I begin to share with you many of you will be afraid how do they get money we are not herbalists favor when you access these laws it will change you overnight we together I'm wetting your appetite and then I'm going to teach you quickly while I begin to teach them just bring the vessels and then we pour the oil because what is coming upon you tonight is the grace for favor I want you to believe it there is such an impartation upon a man for favor father please let your people believe you please please let your people believe you if you don't believe this you will pay for it i promise you there are times for months months i never go to the atm i even forget that i have an atm there is no 24 hours no 24 hours that somebody does not bless me no 24 hours i can give you my phone now and you can check from when i sat down till now a lot upon a lot how they got my account number i don't know brothers and sisters there are properties that have been given to me today i don't know where it is i've not gone there to see it do you believe in favor I shared with you last year about the gold mine 18.7 hectares of a gold mine given for nothing three kings came together and said we must make sure he has it it is not by might it is not by power are we together there are tailors that sew my clothes aside from one I have never aside from another again two really 
one a cousin to Reverend George Adeboe of Rema he may even be listening now with his wife every time I travel to Lagos to a particular church for meeting there he comes with his wife materials upon materials favor there are bags full of gifts I have not opened since they came I don't even know what is there who told you favor does not work there are mysterious people who have sent a lot in millions to this ministry nobody knows who they are they didn't even call to say I am so 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 and so what makes you think there is no favor I have never bought a car with my money. I have never bought a car for myself with my money. The only car I ever bought with my money was to bless my mother. All the cars you see came to favor. Not one naira. I know many of you are just knowing it now. There is not one car that came hear what I'm saying? You have to believe this. I hope you don't think I'm bragging. I'm opening your eyes to know that there is such a thing as favor. We've been to the airport many times and I'm sitting minding myself and somebody just comes. Oh, this and that and that. And you go and people cry and say recession and cry. Listen, there are businessmen who covenanted with God that a percentage of their profits every time they transfer it to me. I don't know them. I only got a text. This is our covenant with God. My phone right now currently has a recharge card of 62 what will I do with it? What do you do with a recharge card of 62,000? What do you do with it? It's more than the price of the phone. I don't know if she's here. I wish she were here. I would have said she should stand up. Yesterday, after school of ministry, I was at the back. And a gentleman just came trusting God. I think he's here. And, you know, just felt he wanted to sow something. And just held some very serious amount. Dropped it. Now, I see these things all the time and I thank God. But it was a woman's testimony that blessed me. I saw her with a big bag. Some of you who were a big um, bucket, a small bucket. And I said, Madam, what is this? She came with her son. Do you know what she said? She said, Man of God, I was having a dream. And in that dream, you said you wanted to eat chinchin. And the mother, the woman got a bucket full of chinchin and came yesterday. It is still, it is still, I've not even opened it to see what is there. Chinchin. Day and night. Day and night. This is the only way you can succeed and accelerate your life. Any other thing you will cry and weep and hate people. That's why we cannot give. Because after sweating so much for 50,000, will you really be able to give it? Are we blessed? Testimonies. There is no place 
days and there is no day that I wake up. I wake up every day. May God forgive me if I'm lying. There is no day I don't wake up in the morning with text messages, with recharge cards and bank alerts every day, including today, without fail. This is how I live. Because I found from scripture that he daily loads us with benefits. Sometimes I can be sitting down and see a conga van. You ask the boys that work for me. A conga van, bam, just stops. Somebody has ordered something and paid for it. Put my address. And they are offloading these things. And I'm saying, God, what is this? What are you doing to me? And God says, no, you can stop it. You can stop it if you want. I'm waiting your appetite to activate this key. Do you really think you can live a joyful life? When you sit down, you really think your salary is what is going to bless you? To be established? Who lied to you? There is a realm of favor. Are we together? I've shared with you the testimony of this ministry. Where a woman, after a program in Lagos, the woman just came, knelt down in front of me and looked at me and said, please, the Lord led her to give us a land and gave us a land in Lekki. It's still there. I've not been there in years to see it. People have called me and said they gave me a land allocated to sell. Man of God, on behalf of our business, we put A, B, C, D portion. This is for you. And I'm saying, God, what is this? They gave us an assignment to develop maybe a 40, 50 estates. You know, houses and all of that. A man of God, just to let you know that we have three or four units as our own commission. And when we are done, one of the units is yours. And I'm saying, what is this? you see why I don't share my testimonies because it makes people angry and when it makes people angry they hate most people sit down and say preachers carry people's money tithes and offerings how much how much access access are we together now on, on Tuesday, we are going to Kano tomorrow. And on Tuesday, we are going to Nigerian Immigration Services. Their headquarters. Where the top leaders of Nigerian immigration across the whole nation. I have been with them for how many years now? I think about four, four years. We go there every year. I talk to them. I counsel them. The top of the top leaders. You don't even enter their office. Yet for them it's a privilege. Well done, sir. Well done, sir. That's favor. Listen, listen. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Favor. Favor is not just money. Men are rising to assist you to succeed. After my meeting in Joss, I had a little session for a school of ministry in Joss. And when I was done, a lady walked up and gave me something and said, Please go and give your mother. I said, Hi, this thing is still working. I just met my mother. I said, I met a lady. I don't even know who she is. She said, I should give you. And my mother said, this is what I prayed for. I was ten. I think it was um, a big letter of crayfish. And she said, I should go and give my mother. It is difficult to glorify God when you kill yourself producing the result. There is like Bishop Oyedeko called sweatless triumph. There is such a possibility. If you don't believe it, choose your destiny. But as for me, I have decided that hardship will not age me. I will not sit down and be, I will never come and manipulate you and deceive you. All of you sow to 2,000 naira so that I can have food to eat. Not when there is a God in heaven. How to activate favor? What is the mystery that controls this thing? Favor is not just unmerited access. What is the key? The first key to activating favor is sowing the seed of honor. The first key to activating favor in your life is sowing the seed of honor. Write it down. Honor is the first key. Sowing the seed, not receiving a harvest of honor. You must sow the seed for honor. 
because honor is the key for access when you sow seeds of honor you begin to activate favor what is honor the ability to recognize the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness that's honor not just the ability to appreciate it in your heart the ability to recognize the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their honor the seed of honor i don't mean money a seed called honor you sow honor into a man's life there are many people who will never rise in life because of this honor no favor in their life they don't know the difference between a great man and a weak man everybody is the same to them all men are equal and hey, please i don't do all of this no honor many of you don't know why we sow seeds of honor we transport you after koinonia do you know why it's a seed of honor we are programming honor upon the ministry it's not just that we have a lot of money when our elderly people come we don't let them join the queue except they want to they sit down is a seed of honor when i hug our children here is a seed of honor my life is a walking seed of honor i have mastered sowing seeds of honor the first key to command unending favor honor honor through conversations honor through your body language honor through your vest your gestures you see an elderly woman and i greet her mama how are you that's the seed of honor oh she cannot speak english no problem mama don't put yourself under pressure you don't have to know english find an interpreter seeds of honor are we together now yes i sow seeds of honor everywhere once you discern difference you sow that seed of honor that you are close to an environment of honor does not mean you will have it you must sow seeds of honor to parents the entire hamper that was given to me while i was in joss they already know i carried it with the wine and everything and i took it home as i got home i just dropped it when my mother heard i was coming to joss she said what do i want i said i'm not sure I'm, she should not do anything my mother refused and said she must do something she made chin chin and made chicken that's my mother but she has discerned that this is not only my son this is a man of god seeds of honor that's why honor keeps coming honor is not coming because she's my mother she's walking these principles let me tell you whoever walks it will receive it bad manners being rude dishonor you are driving favor from your life you don't treat people well you treat everybody like a piece of rag there are men of god who favor stopped in their life when they rose because they have no regard for anybody they receive honor from others but they don't give honor so those lower than them let me tell you the mystery behind stagnation of favor for many men they keep receiving honor those lower than you keep honoring you but then you yourself don't give honor so you remain there and all of them rise and catch up with your level and even go higher than you then you start saying you people are competing with me abby there's no such thing you refuse to rise because you too are supposed to be rising they are sowing seeds of honor if you keep sowing seeds to me in koinonia whether money or whether whatever and i don't do the same thing you need to see me when i stand before greatness you will not know it's the same apostle joshua selman you're talking about if it means me cleaning the shoes i do it with jesus joy honor it's a big secret many of us do not know honor honor i honor the holy spirit with my life i don't just serve him i don't just use him for anointing koinonia honors the holy spirit that's why you see all kinds of signs and wonders we don't ignore his presence it doesn't matter what we are teaching as the worship team whatever happens the holy spirit has unrestrained honor in this ministry that's why we keep seeing signs and wonders that's why we keep seeing him lifting us from place to place every church i have gone to i have honored them honored them not in terms of money necessarily but honor them in terms of treating them well i don't climb anybody's pulpit and violate their doctrinal beliefs regardless of what it is i manage whatever it is they believe and i preach well 
if their pulpit, if it's a church that they are not allowed to jump around and move and stand in one place, I stand in one place because it is honor. And at the end of it, they say, Wow, we found a young man who is anointed. There are churches I preach, you never hear me pray in tongues once. It doesn't mean I don't, they do not allow that in the open. And then I, I subscribe. Honor. Are we together? I'm showing you success systems. These are the mysteries that people have engaged that has changed their lives. Honor. You must sow seeds of honor. Number two. How do I activate favor consistently? Not today up and tomorrow down. Two. Value. We've spoken about it. You activate favor in your life when you solve people's problems. When your life is committed to solving people's problems, providing valuable solutions to them, it's drizzling outside. Please coordinate them. If some of them can come in, let's, let's just come in. Or they, they can get into the, the, um, the canopies. Thank you so much. Some of them who can come in, you can bring them in. But most of them can go to the canopies. God bless you and thank you. Hallelujah. Solving problems. We are blessed as a ministry because we solve problems. As I'm teaching now, I'm adding value to you. Is that true? I'm adding value. Listen, let me tell you something. Your, when you start solving people's problems, you should do honor. Thank you, sir. There are people I've never seen who call me. Man of God, I just listened to your message, Essentials for a Glorious Relationship. You just saved our marriage. Here is a little seed. Man of God, I just listened to your message, Financial Dominion. Man of God, I just listened to your message, Why Revivals Die. Solving problems. The moment you solve problems, you show honor. And everywhere there is honor, I teach that there is favor. And everywhere there is favor, there are all kinds of rewards, including finances. So the more valuable you become in solving people's problems. Joseph scheduled a season of favor for himself because he was in the prison and he noticed that the prisoners were not laughing. Dr. Mike Wood calls wisdom the ability to discern difference. And he saw that their countenance, something was wrong. And he asked them, what is wrong? They were not the ones who came and told him the dream. He said, what is wrong? And he said, ah, okay, you have asked, let me tell you. This is what happened. And he interpreted the dreams and it happened. Value. You must begin to solve people's problems. They will love you. They will honor you. You must cry to God for grace to be a problem solver. You are either creating problems or solving them. You are either creating problems or solving them. If some of these chairs are free, please let, let's not have people stand. They can occupy the chairs. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Number three. The third key to commanding favor in your life is integrity. The third key to activating favor in your life is integrity. Integrity. Very, very important. What is integrity? It comes from the word integer. Sameness. Consistency. Let me tell you something. You're a man of God here. Listen to me. Before people begin to bless you and sow into your church or your ministry, they will probe your life. Don't think because you just started ministry, people will bless you. They will probe your life. They will hear testimonies of changed lives and want to watch whether he's like one of them. After a life, a season of integrity and consistency, then they conclude. You know, let me tell you something. Hold on. Many people think that the moment you are anointed, you are charismatic, people will just be loyal to you like that. It's a dream. There are many anointed people who have attention but no loyalty. Do you know why? Because people must vet your life and find out that you are worthy of their loyalty. 
Nobody will be loyal to you like that. Parents will not just ask their children, oh, I don't have a problem with you loving this man of God. Give people a chance to probe your life and clear their doubts. Then they will honor you. Are we together? When we started out in this ministry, most people thought that, you know, we're just joking. Most people thought it was all this young people's thing. And for, for, for years, most people thought I was on serious. It's just all these young guys doing things on campus. It's just these people trying to do something. But eventually, I never was angry with them because every great man must be probed. Saying people should not probe you is a joke. They check your character with ladies. They check your character with money. They check your character with discipline. They see how you manage challenges. They see a lot of it is based on that. They will say, Kai, this man is worth my commitment. We have seen that God brought two naira to his hand and that two naira did not change him. He did not stop preaching the truth just because he's looking for food to eat. This is a consistent man. This man will be my pastor. There are many people roaming around calling everybody son, calling everybody daughter. What investment have you made in their life? You must allow people to probe you. You start a business and they suspect whether your product... There are people, when I started out, because of the dimension of the anointing in my life, many people thought, you know, you know, anytime you see somebody walking in unusual levels of the anointing, you may think that maybe some kind of charm or whatever it is. And I used to hear people say it and I say, leave them. Even me, if I attended Koinonia and I watched a man called Joshua Selman, I would think he's holding a charm. And then you watch. There are many people, some of you seated today. Years ago, you would be the last person to be here because you had your differences. Some of you argued it, but with time, now you are some of the strongest people. Do you know there are people in many nations of the world and their assignment is to take koinonia messages. There are whole churches that sit down and what they use for either evening service or midweek service is a koinonia message and they just sit down. There are youth groups, youth fellowships around. You know why? Because they took out time to probe you and when they see integrity, the ability to be unbending regardless of the situations. There are men of God who start teaching and say don't manipulate money from people. But the day they have needs as a ministry, they start bending to that standards. Are we together? Yes. Once people see integrity and consistency, then they make up their minds to listen to anything you say. Listen. Let people probe you until they find a reason to believe you never stop anybody listen if there is anything you are unsure of about my life and this ministry you have a right to sit down and clear your conviction so that you are confident are we together many of you get angry when people suspect you <laughs> how come pastor alpha i've been watching him the way he has been rising in the last three months this guy may have taught something Abba, am I not innocent? Let people probe you up so that when they believe you, they will be the greatest defense. I know you. There are people to do it, they are the ones who are defending this ministry. Ah, no, I used to know this brother. There was a day he gave me 50 naira, he started his giving sins. Do you know the people who accuse you today will be the ones to defend you tomorrow? Give them a chance to have a testimony by themselves. There are people who think the miracles that we announce here are manipulated or faked simply because they've heard that maybe some churches do a lot of things and they come here and then the person who falls under the anointing is seated close to them. They watch it with their own eyes and then eventually their own sicknesses leave and they go back and say, wow, I have seen for myself integrity the third key to activating favor consistency integrity unbending unbending consistently producing results when we started the school of ministry this is the fifth set now when we started the school of ministry most people thought it was a joke let me tell you something look up please as a man of god let me give you a great advice the moment you are doing too many things and you cannot continue in them men will stop believing you you just get up today and says we have 14 days of fire vigil and then after 12 days okay, we found out that things are happening we are not doing this again there are too many inconsistent people we are going to start koinonia business school and after two weeks nobody comes then you close it 
when people probe you and they see that you are too erratic you know what it means to be erratic you just come up with programs there's no consistency nobody will submit to such an authority people want to see consistency they want to know that this is who you are they want to know that you can be predictable you never hear anybody come and give testimony here i don't care whether you're a millionaire or whatever i have never gone to the house of anybody in the name of going there to find out and say okay we are some of our top uh, offering givers and tight payers in koinonia i love you so much and uh, i just wanted you to know that we have the following needs no if i've ever come to your house to tell you we have the following needs stand up hallelujah how many men of god have destroyed integrity from their lives they go around harassing church members and look at people and say uh we don't know if god is speaking to you there's a drum set the thing has turned honestly it's embarrassing and you inconvenience people everywhere integrity please bring bring the, the continuous now number four the third the fourth key to activating favor is quality relationships quality relationships favor is relationship dependent that's why i taught you those other laws quality relationship who you know matters it gives you access men can be wings to you men can become wings to you there are people we know today that can speak for us there are people i know today that can speak for me are we together they can make ex exemptions for you you sow seeds of favor seeds of favor and it changes your life forever relationships number five the third key to activating favor is praying favor provoking prayers there are favor provoking prayers the bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that asketh lord open my heavens cause men to bless me put an anointing upon my life that makes men bless me favor provoking prayers you can pray your way among other things into favor favor provoking prayers many of us don't pray i pray it seriously lord this ministry is a well watered garden people are coming givers are coming my life is a good soil people are sowing into my life as they sow into my life they receive a hundredfold harvest when you sow into a man's life and you receive a harvest nobody will tell you to do it again you will continue doing it again and again and again they sow into your life and nothing happens these are the seeds that you sow and then number six the sixth way of provoking or activating favor in your life is by an impartation from the careers of that anointing an impartation of the grace for favor an impartation of the grace for favor from the careers of the anointing this oil is not what anoints you this oil is simply oil when the oil is anointed then it becomes a medium to bless you the oil in itself has to be anointed this is not anointing oil this is oil after the prayers on it it becomes an anointing oil and it can bless you can favor be transferred can that grace the mantle the grace for favor be transferred absolutely there are people in this ministry that are carrying it bodily there are people who have begun to see it in their lives like day and night people call me all the time and say my god apostle this thing works like charm and tonight it will come upon your life what does favor give you in life speed speed what are the benefits of activating favor speed speed something that would take men 10 years can be achieved in three months under an atmosphere of favor
what are the benefits of favor number two ease ease the mystery of ease people like bishop oyedeko would call it sweatless triumph ease where the lines just fall for you in pleasant places and you have a good heritage battles that stand before you while you are preparing to fight them you open the door and find dead bodies favor fought your battles ah. favor has fought my battles in life i have seen ah. for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise we magnify look at this we are in zaria in the north this whole road this is a major road but this whole road is blocked every friday every friday go and try to block a road somewhere in the name of service and see what happens to you everything works for our favor in this ministry everything regardless of what it is you try to fight these ministries you will watch by yourself activating favor and making it happen you don't fight a man of favor and win it's a waste of time it's like boxing a war where a man that carries the mantle of favor is untouchable literally untouchable because god will raise help left right and center left right and center left right and center Many of our parents have no favor. No doors opening for them. Nothing happening. Favor. Koinonia today is a place of favor. 70% of the people who are blessed by this ministry have never seen me. How do you follow a man when the videos are not even uploaded on YouTube? They don't know the picture. The first and only time certain people have seen me is dreams. Yet you listen to the message, it forces you to look for someone and give him. Whether you like it or not. That's not normal. There are people following scattered across different nations this night. Favor has brought me honor. Favor has brought me glory. I have stood before politicians. I have stood before kings. I have stood before billionaires. I have drank of their minds and their wisdom for free. Men have given me access, uncommon access, uncommon doors. It still happens all the time and it will not fail. There are people who send me text messages every time. Apostle, is there anything we can do for you? We want to do for you. I don't know how many people in this ministry send text messages every time. We want to wash your car. We want to do something. Somebody came early in the morning. I was sleeping and I had, it, it was like there was water splashing on my car. And I checked and I saw somebody washing my car by force. I know if I ask you, you wouldn't agree. I said, what is this one? Honestly, they even disturb it. Just washing the car with joy. I said, now if I drive this person, favor, favor, it is real and it happens. We have sown seeds of favor. We meet the security people. We honor them. We bless them. The, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, they come here. Some, I'm sure many of them are outside here with the buses and they are waiting. 99% of them are not necessarily Christians, but they love Koinonia and they will come and wait and watch the service and watch everything happening. No complaint. You know why? Because seeds of honor have been sown. Seeds of honor has been sown. There are so many people. We have scattered seeds of honor around. Look at CGC. And the honor that they have shown this ministry. I have never seen a ministry with men of God as humble and members that love Jesus and truthfully like the members in this church, CGC. It is true. It is true. It is from my heart and it is true. Hallelujah. Some of the pastors are my fathers and literally 
those men can see me and just greet like this and i'm wise enough to know that whilst they are sowing seeds of honor i must sow seeds of honor every time people sow seeds of honor sow it back don't receive and wait you receive they have reason but you have remained where you are they will be calling you a superstar but it will be for a short time until they catch up with you somebody blesses you ah um pastor alpha bless you you reciprocate back that way both of you have reason We sow into the lives of mission agencies because we honor what they represent. That's why souls continue to be saved here. David Biome, the Lord asked him to go and meet Billy Graham before he dies. And David Biome traveled to America, carried a very huge seed, sowed into the life of Billy Graham. And Billy Graham said a word of prayer for him. He said he came back and preached a very simple message. And about one third of the church came out for altar call he carried something whenever you see consistency there is something tonight you're about to receive an impartation this may be one of the most important days in your life some of you have never had a man of god impart anything upon you you have gone for anointing services some of you have all kinds of oils in your house oil does not anoint the oil is anointed to anoint my prayer is that there will be a replication of results this is my prayer and i don't i know that not everybody will believe it but brothers and sisters if you believe this god has given me honor god has given me honor honor beyond my level in life everything connected to me has flourished god has Bless me. He has done all kinds of things. While you are seated, everyone, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, this is the moment. I'm ready to succeed. I am tired of failing. I am tired of hardship. Pray. You have taken all my shame. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my cries. You've taken all disappointments. You've taken all my pain. You've taken all my shame. And you have made them be yours. My heart prays to the King. Lord, you have taken all my sorrow.
there will be people standing please it takes a lot of time we will be fast many of you will not be able to stand i don't know how we'll manage this the moment this oil touches your head and you receive it begin to prophesy command things to hear your voice and command them to produce for you don't just have the oil and sit down and you are watching are we together and then we are going to round up father in the name of jesus you have anointed me you have shown me favor you have granted me access to mysteries and lord i decree and declare this oil is about coming upon the life of your people in the name of jesus lord everyone please help me with the mic every single person who partakes of this impartation lord may everything around them turn around may everything around them turn around miracle jobs by this favor turn around miracles by this favor in the name of jesus let hopeless situations change let hopeless situations change let the barren receive twins triplets Lord, in one month, may men become millionaires. I say it again. In one month, may people who don't have anything in their pocket now, let it be a testimony that will shock everyone. May businesses arise from nowhere. Let there be people here that will start paying the school fees of several children because of how blessed they will be i decree and declare while this is an oil of favor i call it the oil of judgment as this oil comes on your head i declare that because of what is on your head someone must be laid to rest to let you go listen uncompleted projects whether academics whether whatever as this oil comes the grace for completion comes with it hear me anyone here struggling financially except it is not the hand of god that is upon my life i decree and declare that as this oil comes upon you in ways that even you you cannot explain god will change your stories and wipe your tears I provoke the grace, the anointing. Let everyone who makes contact with this oil, some of you, as soon as it touches you, you will see your phones ringing, miracles, text messages. In the name of Jesus, whatever you have been looking for that did not come, let it come right now. In Jesus' name. If there is anybody who is in any kind of trouble now, trouble that only God can help you, I speak to you by this favor that has come upon you I turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ I turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ restoration will cost you you will have to provoke your faith a seed is not just money a seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. it's a proof that you love God Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, he says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. 
Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread. His lunchbox and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience logs you today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak to you. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many any mysteries in the spirit sacrifice few minutes ago you were shouting and now koinonia is quiet why because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow if you want to be great listen to me if you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system get used to this language sacrifice you will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship your job left you, but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use 
your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest. Though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your things. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that would bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. Said, ah, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, don't he slay me. I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Co were talking all kinds 
lots of nonsense Job came listening to them and in chapter 42 Job said well I may not be able to give as I used to be but I still have my mouth I can be an intercessor 42 verse 10 he started interceding for his friends and God said this is it he took his life and God turned the captivity of Job 42 verse 10 when he prayed for his friends Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and non-deliverate for a spoil and there is no advocate that prophesies to them restore for you to ever experience restoration there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life the prophetic the prophetic either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect you have to understand what I'm teaching you without an encounter with a prophetic grace a prophetic office or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God there is no restoration it's impossible second scripture Psalm 119 verse 49 I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see Psalm 119 verse 49 it says remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope give us an amplified I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me break to I believed it and he said remember the word the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me that's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham Isaac Jacob the God of Oyedipo so there is it's not some religious you know whatever it is it is a system of invoking the personal covenant God aside from the old and the new testament God has personal covenants with men till today God can enter a covenant with a man a family because of something that was done and say look whoever does certain things connected to this I will bless you God had a covenant with Abraham listen and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham a sad story later happened and then Ishmael came out when Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. 
a child is crying the mother is crying only one voice is heard in heaven because God said Abraham you and anybody and anything that comes out of you is not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not he is bound to it it is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing remember the last scripture Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow was not something God revealed to the prophet and said, that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date when that land will be delivered. Listen, this is not revelation. It is a God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband dead. Her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute. Bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. 
brothers and sisters hear me this issue of one day one day is faithlessness you can insist the bible said today if you hear his voice you can choose and say lord today today i'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle you believe that say amen listen you are the only one who continues to progress in time the realm of the spirit does not progress in time the time is bare are we together now so in the realm of the spirit you don't there's no such thing as past and present with god so when you say god remember five years ago you said you would do something and you did not do it god said it doesn't make any difference it can still happen and you say lord but i'm older now god says and so i can readjust it to still fit the older you lord you gave me a word that i will marry at 21 i'm 35 and god says no problem i can do it lord i plan to have six children god said it doesn't make any difference six years two two years with twins my word has come to pass lord you said you would prosper me but this has not happened i would have gotten a job how much was the salary that time twenty thousand how much would you have had now one point two god says i give you an idea that brings you two point four in one month please you have to believe what i'm telling you otherwise we're wasting our time here is powerful it can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest you've seen this happen in koinonia somebody will write jam for instance and have 160 something and all of a sudden a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something how do you explain that someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one and then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8 oh please brothers and sisters we are intelligent people but we are also spiritual never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life the same way you are seated here and say apostle can god do it brothers and sisters he can look at my life look at this ministry the word of god can god cure that sickness yes he can i repeat yes he can can god turn around my captivity some of you are not sick but what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem god can still turn it around god can turn it around in the name of jesus god can turn it around the lord declared and said i shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration i truly believe every word of god and i believe that one of the things god is going to be doing tonight is to call back things compress time for people call back things please believe it believe it believe it i am a testimony i've seen god bless people overnight overnight he said rejoice not over me my enemies sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say god i have served you i didn't kill anybody i didn't rob anybody why is my life like this then god tells you locate the power of prophecy locate the power of prophecy some of you didn't want to come tonight you can come and still look and say wow what an interesting service or you can come and say lord it is within your power to change this situation why should we pro prolong it it's within your power it's within your power you've seen the testimonies we never announce anything here that is not verified you've seen all the great testimonies no matter what is wrong with your life your ministry has crashed down you were once on fire and once anointed and something happened you can't tell what it is but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again you are preaching and even you you know you are not blessing anybody again like the hair of samson it can come back again my help my help My mother has died. I'm an orphan.
fun. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move. He's dead. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be like the Lord will perfect that concerning me soon or later he'll turn in my favor it's turning around me don't cry as if jobs are finished a job is not with any government a job is in the word of God listen to me don't cry no Stop that tears. It's a weak knot. When the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. The God of heaven is able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I, he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very as the message is already communicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you, please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Come.
anti-clockwise. This is the instruction God is giving you to walk around like against, like a man is going against the clock. And this is someone's destiny, literally. Literally, someone's destiny. God is restoring something. It's an instruction that God is giving. I'm turning things around. Restoring the years. I'm restoring time. No, it will not kill you. The mighty wise are right.
church I'm seeing at least 11 people it's like a stigma a garment upon your destiny wherever you are right now reproach roll away roll away reproach be rolled away by the power of the Holy Ghost
is one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind. The Bible says there is no man who stands on a block and looks back to his feet. Remember Lot's wife. She was connected to the past. Her exodus had begun to come. And they were asked to look, set their face like a flint. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. And while she was there, something about her past. And just for turning back, she became salt. The past can keep you in one place forever. Just because she turned back, she became salt. What is there in turning back? Everything. It can stagnate your life forever. I prophesy one more time. Whatever has made you to refuse to forget. that has made you to distrust any man that comes into your life because when they come you think they are like the ones who came before a past job, a past breakthrough, a past wife a whatever it is has stopped many people from moving forward every time you see success it looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came so you are even afraid of it no
things that stop from experiencing results. My brother, come. You. Your salvation has come. Come and stand here. Pray to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes. Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This one I'm saying, Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lekho? Listen, just one touch from the Lord will change your story, lift your hands. Lay come, overflow, he's in the overflow, where are you? Please stand up, my brothers, stand up. What's your name? Lay come, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here, your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. Lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's handy. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Oh, Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you. Something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around, it's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus and bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. One. She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. Yes. You are a sincere person. What do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. 
so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and ruin your group. There's already trouble. Yes, Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. August. That's what correct, stand up. That's what they correct, told me. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you. And I don't know how your mother got to know me. But your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because you people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You're a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it burn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the Pepsi. Careful. Federal Medical Center. Yes, careful. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Kev. Oh, you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. You were part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, he will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you 
city. Well, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Man? I'm coming from State. State. I'm going to pray for you. Ma, the Lord is said, I should tell you that He's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. sound of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come call the person's name now no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son is the one here in the okay you're standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with a child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You yes, believe. What's her name? My name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. Yes, In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, immediately. It's the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Winter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your 
back sometimes. Diabetes. Hold on. Ulcer. I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You, are, you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, mama? Okay. Okay. Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You are being repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. It is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband, yes. we were from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. We have to pray for him because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and all sad. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never give it up. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. One, two, three. No, no. 
of the eternal covenant. I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood and I cause it every activity of diabolism in the name of Jesus Christ. speaks against your life in the day and in the night is speaking against you i stand here tonight in the name of jesus and i stretch my hands towards you if there is anyone inside outside under the sound of my voice who is a victim of the speakings of altars i command them to die now in the name of jesus i cause those altars they cease from functioning i cause those altars physical rings on your hand physical rings then it will disappear who is that there's someone here like that please quickly let me pray for you don't be embarrassed i want to pray for you the lord just gave me a revelation sometimes you look at your hand and you see you think it's a vision rings like ring on your hand you started seeing it in your dreams but now physically sometimes you see it whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will certainly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now. While we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. 
Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow too. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things. You are here and... You are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside, or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as a Holy Spirit to stop him, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop. No matter what you do, that's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly.
honestly, let's let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy that this this you see this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, yes, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, yes, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Uh, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother. This 
gentleman, bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come up now. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. Make your way out. Make your way out. to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy we will continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we are going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside overflow one. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to overflow two um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga, and promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross 
was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. They will still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of one. Jabada. Let the angel of the Lord speak. Now arise, O Lord. in the name of Jesus. Those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age-long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. That which God gives us it is our joy to always dispense it to the people of God. Freely we have been given. Freely we receive. Said, Son of man, can these bones live again? And he said, Only thou knowest. And he said, Prophesy. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare right now every dry bone, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. 
Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life. Dead finances. Dead relationships. Dead career lines. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy. Let it come back to life now. I prophesy. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that is supposed to have opened up to you, and we don't know why it has refused to open till now. In the name of Jesus, at this June Miracle Service, I swing those doors open for you. I swing those doors open for you. I swing those doors open for you. For those who are asking God for direction for the next level, beginning from tonight, receive encounters that give you direction. Those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts. I decree and declare right now. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I declare and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not walking in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and Lord's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the Spirit revealed in Scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, come back to life in the name of Jesus. 
destroy your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now your life now listen Noah did not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration whatever has not been working in your life right now whether it's your academics your marriage whatever it is I force it to work now anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus the son of the living God whether they are here or connected by faith I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children become a joyful mother of children I pray for your finances whatever makes this thing hard for you I curse that spirit now in Jesus name I decree and declare illumination grace to know what to do and grace to succeed at whatever you do receive it in the name of Jesus for those who are students whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams I prophesy like rain from four points upwards I prophesy like rain hear what I'm saying I prophesy like rain from four points upwards in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a job in the name of Jesus between now and the next 30 days may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. Zepotokosopatarataka. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death 
there is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death it always comes like a circle looms over territory and takes the life of people i declare let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family i cause accidents i cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you i command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again thank you for lifting stand our time is gone please everyone stand i know that our time is gone but i cannot let us go without giving an opportunity please everyone stand any of you let's honor this altar call quickly help, help those under the anointing there are people here standing and saying man of god i want to make it right with jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying man of god i want to return back some of you are yet to make this decision please listen to me inside and outside wherever you are you are saying man of god if you will pray for me i'm ready to surrender my heart to jesus i'm ready to start afresh or start anew wherever you are i want to count five please if you are coming i want you to run clear the way for them our time is up and we have to be very very fast there are so many other things to do wherever you are as we begin to clap for you i count five you should be here please run like there's fire on the mountain one those coming from outside please protocol help them clear the way for them so that they come quickly quickly two koinonia appreciate them as they come run to jesus christ overflow one two three four everywhere please quickly three Are you coming? Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight I've heard your word and I believe in you I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life I believe that God raised him from the dead and I declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you 
have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. Appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them quickly. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.